Happy Friday, alibiers. Welcome to another episode of Pretty Lies and Alibis. I'm Gigi. Wanted to get this episode in early today. Sorry I wasn't on last night, but my aunt, unfortunately, is back in ICU. This is a cycle, and we are hoping this time we figure out what's up and get her on the road to healing. It's been since November. She's tired. We got to figure this out. I'm going to be staying with her today. I'm one of her caregivers, but wanted to catch you guys up on what we know about Casey White and Vicki White and also Barry Morphew and his daughters were on Good Morning America earlier. So got a little bit from that. First, we want to give a shout out to one of our sponsors, Two Cool T-Shirt Quilts. You can go to twocoolt-shirtquilts.com slash pretty lies and alibis. We appreciate their support. Our very first sponsor. Go check them out. All right, so Casey White and Vicky White. I'm going to show some pictures here, and uh, they have put out what they think could be what Vicky would look like if she were to have dyed her hair dark. As you know, she kind of had that very bleached kind of white color hair. So they've put this picture out. If you're on YouTube, you can see these photos. If not, we put them out on our social media. And this next picture, I almost feel like I'm showing pornography and I try not to judge based on looks, but his man boobs are um, kind of bothering me right now up on the screen. He does have some white supremacy tattoos, which just lets you know what kind of a vile human being this is. We're going to skip this real quick. That's Barry. We'll put that up later. All right. So we learned yesterday kind of a game changer in the extent of their relationship. She had been traveling to see him for two years in prison and also had been communicating with him, I assume, through You've heard me talk about JPay, how I communicate with the person I know who's in prison. It's an email system, essentially, and really easy, probably, to just sign up with a fake email, use a fake name, and then nobody knows who you're really talking to. So she had been commu in communication since 2020, and I wouldn't have guessed traveling to see him. That seems a little risky, but I don't know how it goes between jails and prisons, but... I know that a lot of times you have kind of the same people that transport prisoners from jail to prison when they make that transition. And she could have wore a hat. You just don't know. It's not guaranteed that every single prison employee knows every single jail employee in the entire state. So I guess maybe that's one way. I'm sure they're going through all of his email communications, jail phone calls, stuff like that, surveillance at the prison to see if she came in. We're going to learn a lot more, I think, about how involved these people were for a couple of years, um, which goes back to she could have been planning this for two years. And who knows what she did to prepare fully. We know she sold her home and got a, a really low uh amount for that home almost two hundred thousand dollars lower than what it it had appraised for i guess and they believe she got cash that gave her plenty of resources to stock up on provisions to get whatever they need to be off the grid to find a place to be off the grid i don't think they're stupid enough to be walking around in the mall or walking around at the beach. He sticks out like a sore thumb because of his height, his tattoos, and the other reasons I just said. So they found her radio, her sheriff's department radio, the leg shackles and handcuffs. Detectives think she may have her phone, but uh, it's not turned on. Now, here's what's interesting. Investigators are now going to re-examine the 2008 death of Casey's girlfriend, so the Limestone County Sheriff's Office will reopen an investigation into the mysterious death of 31-year-old Christy Shelton, who apparently it was ruled a suicide by a sawed-off shotgun. And that's kind of hard to do. It's, it's not a common way to kill yourself. Now, here's the kicker. Casey was there at the time of her, air quote, suicide, but was ruled out as a suspect. 
but her family never believed that she killed herself and they had questioned what Casey was actually doing at the time of the shooting. And so they've taken to social media to express uh, they want this to be looked at again. And Christie's daughter said in a statement, I believe, to a local news source, News 19, Casey White was with my mom the night she committed suicide. Nothing was really done. I don't think they took him in for questioning. So maybe this video will fall in the right hands of someone who can actually make a difference or look into it more, maybe more investigation. I'm not really sure. And it was only seven years after Christie's death that he had broken into the ex-girlfriend's home and shot two of her friends, killed the family dog. And those are the crimes that he was ultimately sentenced to 75 years for. And uh, yesterday, the Lauderdale County Sheriff Rick Singleton said Casey and Vicki were in contact via telephone from 20, 2020 to 2022 while he was in prison. Vicky's mom apparently was oblivious to all this. She says she's in complete shock over the events of the past week and obviously has made a plea for Vicky to turn herself in before she gets hurt or killed. Vicky had been living with her mother for the past five weeks since she sold her house. And she said the, the most tr trouble Vicky has ever been in was a speeding ticket. And she just doesn't understand what has happened. She does remember Vicky having a PayPal, but she didn't speak much about it. So she didn't even know Casey's uh, first name until all this. And as I said on the last episode, she has been fired and she will lose that state funded pension now. Casey is being charged with permitting or facilitating escape in the first degree, which is a class C felony. And that carries up to 10 years in prison and a $15,000 fine. I honestly wouldn't doubt once they're located and taken into custody, maybe she gets more charges related to this. We'll just have to wait and see. They've been getting tips coming in with reported sightings all the way from Florida to Kentucky. That always happens in these cases where people see them everywhere. Look at Brian Laundry; They had him on the Appalachian Trail. They had him in a bunch of different states. They also... We just showed you, released the photo of what Vicky may look like with dark, dark hair. So the U.S. Marshal Services is offering up to $10,000 for information leading to the capture of Casey and up to $5,000 for Vicky. They may be in that 2007 orange or copper colored Ford Edge. And anyone with tips can call the U.S. Marshal Service at 1-800-336-0102. So real quick, the full video for Barry Morphew and his daughters on Good Morning America is not out right now. There are a couple of snippets. I think usually they don't air it in full online until it's aired on the West Coast. So maybe by early afternoon, we'll have that entire interview. I'll post it for you guys. Ironically, we're just a few days away from the second year anniversary of her disappearance. If you remember, she disappeared on Mother's Day and Mother's Day is this Sunday. So he gave his first interview since this case was was dismissed. And he said he still loves Suzanne's and demanded that authorities find her. And he said, I just love my girls. I love my wife and I want her to be found. So Mallory also said, we've been silent for a long time. We've decided we finally want to break the silence. It's been an emotional roller coaster, but we feel like we can take our first steps in healing. And Macy also spoke and said, we just know our dad better than anyone else. We know he was not involved in our mother's disappearance. We want to heal. We feel like we haven't been able to heal these past two years. Uh, they also slammed the DA saying, I just hope Linda will step up to the plate and do everything. This was uh, actually Macy who said this. Uh, I just hope Linda will step up to the plate and do everything she can to find our mom. What they've done is not fair. We're never going to stop looking for our mom. And attorneys for Barry's family, the family attorney, I didn't get the feeling this was a defense attorney, could be. Um, they are filing a complaint against the DA's office for mishandling the case. And the attorney said, if you want to honor Suzanne and if you want to honor the daughters, go find Suzanne. Prosecutors need to be held responsible and they need to pay for the damage they've, they've caused to Barry, which frankly, nearly irreparable because it's hard for anyone to believe that Barry is not who they claim he was. So I can't wait to see that entire interview this morning. Like I said, we'll put it out for you. If you're on YouTube, you can see Sherlock is resting comfortably. 
uh, behind me. He is chilling out. He was so mad at me for leaving town last week to go to crime con. He attacked me the first two days and now he's just lovey dovey with me. So I guess I'm forgiven. All right, guys, if anything crazy happens, I'll hop back on this evening, but just wanted to go ahead and get these updates out this morning. Hope you have a great Friday. And uh, if I don't see you before to all you moms or aunts that are like moms or if you are in a mom capacity in anybody's life, happy Mother's Day. And uh, if you're lucky enough to still have your mom here, give her a call. Tell, you, tell her you love her. All right. See you guys soon.